Welcome back everyone. My name is Trap. Today we're going to be going over uh, NeoVim Configuration Switcher. If you haven't seen Elijah's video, you really need to watch it. He's done a great job with that. The video that I'm doing today was inspired by work he did. So in his video, he was using something called NVMS, which was NeoVim, NeoVim Switcher script. I've taken that script and I've modified it based on something I've done in my NeoVim environment hopping series. I've taken the two, combined them together. I'd like to show you what I've done. But first of all, if you haven't watched Elijah's video, please go take a look at it because it's really good and it's the foundation for what I'm building upon. I'm now going to demonstrate changes that I made to a script named NVMS, which was used in Elijah Manor's video. I've combined that work with stuff I had been doing on NeoVim environment switching. So let's see what happens when we run that script now. So we typed in Astro. We're going, to, we're going to see that in this lower window here, Astro is going to get cloned into the local state directory. And now it's there. We were going to exit and we're going to clone in another item. We'll uh, use NVMS again and we're just going to do, look for Chad. This time we're going to install Chad. Now the difference between my video and, at, and Elijah's at this point is I'm actually cloning the repository. So you don't have to set it up. You just let this script do all the work for you. So if we do a couple more, we're going to find that I can clone trap, which is my production environment. No surprise there. Okay, so you can see on the screen here that, that it, we're cloning multiple things. And we've got Astro, we've got NV, Chad, Trap, and NVMS, and we'll do uh, Zulu. You'll see when we look at the code that Zulu is different because it's the package manager is Packer. But I'm using the same Git repository to clone for my both of my environments, so I need to be able to switch branches when I do that. And one of the other cool things that Eliza did was he showed you that you could do a key binding. I've done something just slightly differently. In my environment, I'm using a tiling window manager, which is called BSPWM, and I have a hotkey daemon called SSHKD. So if I do an Alt-N, it runs that same script. So you can see in the upper right-hand corner of my screen, it did a notification. It told me what I ran. So in here, I could I could navigate back to that window and I could type in Prime. This is the Prime Starter Kit. If I do the Alt in again, or I can type in Starter. So there's the Starter one. Okay, so these two are running. No big surprise there. So we're going to just leave them running. So they're different. They're different sessions. And now we see we have Astro, NVChab, NVim, Prime Starter, Trap, Wireplug, and Zoo. Now we're going to delete a couple, so we'll go ahead and delete in. Uh, so we're going to run the nvim s script again. I'm going to type in dash h, so it's going to tell you what the help options are. So the dash d means delete, dash h displays what, it, what you have here. If you type in an invalid option, you're going to get an error message, and it's going to, you know, basically can't, it's an illegal operation, and you get the help message telling you what to do. Take a look at the tmux sessions that I have open. So I have invim trap which just another session we're going to run in this session we're going to do nvim dash trap and then i can also create another tmux session and i'll do a new dash session nvim dash nv chad with the name of nvm chad we're in that window and now now we type in that nvim chad command and we have the chad one running if we, now we'll just go ahead and create a session for Astro. So now Astro is running. So if I do the nvim dash Astro, I've got Astro running. So if we look at my tmux and down on the lower split, you're going to notice that I've got Astro running, I've got nv chad running, and in this one, I've got nv trap running. So I actually have three neo vims running right now. Um, what I'm going to do then is go back to the nvim s worker function and we will just go ahead and do an nvim s dash dash d and we're going to get rid of starter and we'll do nvim s dash d and we'll do we'll go ahead and get rid of prime obviously that second argument didn't count I did this because I want you to see that the cache, the config, the local, and the share, they're all suffixed with the alias name that's in, in our, that we're creating when we create these environment variables. 
Now I'm back on my primary desktop, so we'll run the nvms command again, but this time we'll, at the prompt, we'll make a typographical error. So we'll just type in some bogus stuff. And you're gonna notice what it does is it exits. Notice at the bottom of the screen, we did not create an alias that says nothing selected. These are aliases that the script creates. You can see that each program that we install has its unique alias. It uses that nvm app name environment variable and it uses the alias and then it runs nvim. That's how, the, this is what makes the magic work when you run that command like nvim-astro. I wanna point out a difference you may experience and this is gonna all depend on what you've done with a prior NeoVim installation. If you notice down here in the bottom in my repeat, I've got nvim, that is the default location for NeoVim. So when I run this script, if, if I type and I select the default, that's the NeoVim environment that I'm going to run. If that directory does not exist on your machine, then what you're going to get is a NeoVim installation running without any plugins. Now I'm going to demonstrate that my production NeoVim environment, nor the NeoVim s-trap environment, has a telescope key binding that brings up the planets. So to do that, I'll run in my normal NeoVim environment and I'll do a leader FP and it shows me a file find, which is what I expected. Now we're gonna run the NVim NeoVim dash trap and we're gonna see the same thing, leader FP, it brings up find files, which is also what we expected. So now what we'll do is we'll navigate over to the source code and we're gonna delete, uh, we're gonna re-enable this line right here. So we'll turn this one back on, we'll save the file, and then we will bounce back over to this session and we'll run my default configuration again, and we'll do that leader FP and we'll see the plants, also what we expected. We'll do the nvim s command again, I'm sorry, the neovim trap command, and we'll do the leader FP and we're seeing that is the one that we've cloned. So now we're gonna bring that environment down to do that. We go back to the other session and we're going to do a git commit. So we'll do a lat gs and we will take the key map and we will say add telescope planets. And we'll do a git push on that. So when the unpushed goes away, Fugitive has done its work. So we come back over to the other session and now we're going to do nvim s and we're going to select trap. And now that hesitation is the fetch and the pull taking place in the background. And as soon as it's done, it's going to launch NeoVim. And we're going to find that the planets are now available to me. So there's planets. So when we get out of this and we check the monitor, we're going to see that we actually did a pull, which is what we wanted to see. So if we run NVim S again and we do trap again, this time it's doing, the, it's doing the fetch, but there's nothing to do. So it's, you're gonna see it's gonna go in a little bit. You're gonna see it went in, right? MMS, trap. It does that fetch. It's already been kept once or twice, so it's gonna be pretty quick. But if I keep running it, you're gonna see it's pretty quick, okay? So that's showing you all the routes, cloning, pulling, and also clone of a depth one or clone of a full and changing branches. In my environment, I use a tiling window manager called BSPWM. And so in my hotkey daemon file, I set up alt in to actually be the key binding. So recall that when I'm on another screen and I just simply do alt in, it runs that command. In my my aliases file, I have sourced the nvim app names file if that file exists on my hard drive. I do not add that file to my configuration management, so I've added it to the .git anore. I do that because I do not want those aliases available to me on machines that I have not run the nvms script on. So we'll take a look at the nvim app names file. These are aliases that the script creates. You can see that each program that we install has its unique alias. It uses that nvim app name environment variable and it uses the alias and then it runs nvim. That's how, this is what makes the magic work 
when you run that command, like in them dash astro. Now we'll take a look at the code and to see how I made this possible. Notice on line 10 that we have a, a, an array that we're going to load. Each element in the array is separated by a pipe. Those spaces are in the environment variables as you read them, so we're going to strip those as well. We can see on line 18 and line 20 that I'm actually pulling from the same repository. That's why I need a branch name. So in the second case, we're going to do a full clone, and then we navigate to that particular branch with the get checkout. On line 25, you can see that I've got the um, NVIM app names environment variable, which will become a file that we write to. So if you wanted to change that to something else on your computer, you change what's on line 25 and you're going to be writing that file somewhere else. I do not put that file in Git repository. Um, I've excluded that in my Git ignore. If we take a look at the Git check command, we're going to determine whether or not we need to do a pull. And so to do that, we are, we're going to take a look at the current local and base branches and the remote. We're also going to be using the get fetch to make sure we have current context. Ideally, we want to avoid the pull because it is a little more expensive of an operation. So if I can avoid it, I do avoid it. Here's this function that does the remove of all the spaces from whatever, whatever was pulled out of that, out of that uh, table array. The build NeoVim app array is extracting fields from the NeoVim app array. And you can see that we really don't care about the URL or branch, and that's on line 71. The only thing that we care about right now is the alias. So we, put, we read that information, we strip the spaces from it, and then we put it into the NeoVim apps array. We are going to recursively remove directories um, when it's necessary or when you've chosen to delete an, an environment. And you can see on line 146 through 149, those are the files that get deleted. But each NeoVim environment is in its own location. So when you run this command and you decide to delete something, you're not impacting any other NeoVim environment. The run command check function is used to run a command from another directory. And we're going to see when we take a look at the run command check function that that particular function is going to determine if a pull is being used. If a pull is being used, then it's going to check is the pull needed, and it uses the get check function to make that determination. The default is to run the command, but if we can avoid it, we're going to set it to false on line 181 to avoid that uh, get pull command. Moving back to a different directory is pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to go into that one anymore. The alias file, that's pretty straightforward. We're just simply writing that alias file that you saw. So what's on line 203 is the concatenation of the NVIM app array. The select NeoVim app function is pretty straightforward. It uses FZF to drive the prompt and allow you to make the selection. And then on lines 218 to 223, we're actually going to echo that selection out so it can be used later on. This next block of code is not a function. It runs when the script runs. So it's setting the delete NeoVim app flag to false. And if you use the D option, it's going to set that flag to true. Any, any invalid, it's going to display the message. Or if you did the H option, it's going to display the usage flag as well. This leaves us with the main function, which you can see is pretty straightforward. We're going to build the NeoVim app array. We'll write the alias file. We'll let the user make a choice. If the choice was invalid, we'll exit the program. If a choice was made, we're either going to delete that choice or we're going to clone it or pull it. I hope this video has helped you. I hope it's given you some ideas on what you too can do to make your environment a little more productive gives you the opportunity to test and try out different NeoVim configurations and keep them running at the same time without any conflicts between their systems. Hats off again to Elijah Manor for his great video. My name is Trap. I'm out. May God bless you.